You've tuned in to Super Kid Academy. We're live in five, four, three, two, one. Have you ever looked up in the night sky and admired all of the beautiful stars? It's an amazing display. Well, one night, a very bright star arose in the sky and it outshined all of the other stars. Stay tuned with us as we take a journey along with the wise men as they went to worship the newborn king. Hey there, Cadet Sadie. What do you have behind your back? Oh man, you noticed. I sure did. Well, it's a star. What? Thank you. You didn't have to do that. A star. It reminds me of our memory verse. That's right, Luke 2.2. 2. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. Let's do that right now, super kids. the most wonderful time of the year. It's a time to celebrate the honor of birth of Jesus. The first celebration took place as a star rose into the night sky. It brought attention to many and their wise men who followed the star. They knew a newborn king had been born and they wanted to come and worship him. 
When they came to see the newborn king, they did not show up empty-handed. They came to worship him in their giving. Matthew chapter 2, verse 10 and 11 say, When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down to worship him. When they opened their treasure chest, they gave them gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is the treasure chest, probably like the one they had. Those three gifts the wise men brought were very easily and fit for a king. But th those men were called wise men probably for several reasons. But one of the wisest things that they did was present an offering to Jesus. If you want to be wise, follow the examples of the wise men and always give your best to Jesus. When you think of wintry drinks, what do you think of? Hmm, well, I think of hot chocolate with lots and lots of marshmallows. Today in the kitchen, Lieutenant Aubrey is going to teach us how to make hot chocolate buddy. Super kids, grab your spatulas. It's time for In the Kitchen. Cadet Cadence, it is so cold outside. I know, it's making me want a nice cup of hot chocolate. Well, guess what? What? Today we're actually making peppermint hot chocolate. <gasps> Yay! All right, Cadet Cadence, I know our Super Kids hands might be just a little bit cold, but what should they do before they start making their hot chocolate? Wash their hands and ask an adult to help. Mm -hmm. And Super Kids, if you use warm water, your hands won't be cold anymore. That's right. Now for your ingredients today, Super Kids, you'll need two cups of milk, a half cup of mini chocolate chips, pretzel sticks, six large marshmallows, and some orange slices. And for your supplies, you'll need a whisk, mm -hmm. a pot, and some fun Christmas mugs. All right, are you ready to get started on our hot chocolate? Yes. Okay, super kids, your first step is going to be to take your milk and we're gonna take our saucepan and we're just gonna pour it in. And this is going to stay on the heat until it's simmering. And simmering means that it's not boiling yet, so it's not really bubbly, but it's almost there. So really you just wanna warm your milk up. And while our milk is warming, Cadet Cadence, we are going to make a snowman buddy to go on top of our hot chocolate. Oh, wow. It's gonna be really fun. All right, so super kids, we've got our large marshmallows. So you can take three and I'll take three. There you go. And then we're gonna grab a toothpick. And you're gonna put your marshmallows on your toothpick so that it looks like a little snowman. And then we're gonna decorate them. Okay. You got it? Yeah. Nice, so yeah, you just stick it right on in. <laughs> it's gonna look just like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then super kids, we'll take another toothpick and you wanna make a spot in your marshmallow for his nose. And then you also want to do them, so I made this little hole right here for his nose. Okay. All right, you got, got that? Mine. Yeah. So then we can go ahead and we've got little orange slices, super kids, to make his nose. So you'll just stick it in there. And now he's got a nose. <laughs> All right, cadet. So now we're going to make the holes for his arms because we're using pretzel sticks for the snowman's arms. And then you can just grab one of those pretzel sticks right there. So you'll make a hole for both arms and then a hole for both legs. Okay. And super kids, we cut down the size of our pretzel sticks just a little bit so that they weren't super, super long. Okay. It's coming together. <laughs> and then after we do our arms and legs, we are going to take some mini chocolate chips to make his buttons and then his eyes. Okay. He's already looking so cute. I know, I'm so excited. Snowmen are fun to make with real snow and they're fun to make with marshmallows. Yeah. Okay. You got your holes for your buttons? Nope, not okay. yet. <laughs> it does get a little sticky. Yeah. All right, so I'm just popping those in there. And then to decorate for his eyes and his mouth, Super Kids, we took some of our hot chocolate, or we took some of our chocolate chips, <laughs> and we melted it down 
And then we put mm -hmm. it in this little Ziploc bag. Okay. So then we're going to just cut the end of it off so that we can make his eyes and his mouth. Okay. Okay. Okay, there's one eye and two eyes. <laughs> And then his mouth. <laughs> okay, we're gonna clean that up just a little bit. <laughs> so there's my snowman. All right, Cadet, you wanna try yours? Yeah. Chocolate's just a little bit messy, but it's okay. <laughs> nice job, that's so cute. There. All right, Super Kids, and our milk is almost done heating up. Perfect. Do you want to show the Super Kids your yeah. little snowman? <laughs> These are going to be so fun in our hot chocolate. So let's get our hot chocolate finished up. Okay, so now that our milk has gotten warm and it is simmering, we are going to add in our chocolate chips. Okay. Yay. Let's see what else we have. Okay. Yeah, do you want to add in our hot... Our sure. <laughs> you got it. All right, and super kids, we're gonna mix this with our whisk until it gets all melted. And then Cadet Cadence, what yes. special ingredients are we adding to our hot chocolate today? Uh, some peppermint extract. Yes, so it's not just regular hot chocolate, but it's peppermint hot chocolate. All right, so if you wanna measure out one teaspoon of peppermint extract. Okay. And then we'll get that stirred in here as well. And all of our chocolate chips are almost totally melted. So that means it is almost ready. Oh. Perfect. I'm gonna dump that in there. Yeah. Awesome, and then we'll mix this around. Now, Cadet Cadence, our little snowmen are gonna go right on top of our mugs and it's gonna be like a buddy for us while we're drinking our hot chocolate. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Mm-hmm, and the snowman super kids, he kind of reminds me of the Holy Spirit, don't you think? Yes, I'm gonna read our super kid manual. In John 14, 16, and I will ask the Father, and he will give another Savior, the Holy Spirit of truth, who will be to you a friend, just like me, and he will never leave you. That's right. Super Kids, the Holy Spirit is our friend, and he will never leave us. I'm so excited to enjoy a nice cup of hot chocolate with you, our snowman buddy, and the Holy Spirit. Exactly, our snowman buddy is gonna be with us just like the Holy Spirit is with us all the time. Super kids, let it be a reminder to you that he never ever leaves you. Cadet Cadence, let's go ahead and add our snowman buddies into our hot chocolate. Am I gonna be so cute. hanging out on the top? <laughs> oh, mine fell in. <laughs> Are you ready to try our hot chocolate? Yeah. All right, it smells delicious, Super Kids. You can smell the peppermint. Mm-hmm. Mmm, that's really good. It is, it's really good, and it's really warm. So when it's cold outside, Super Kids, you can just make some peppermint hot chocolate. I'm glad we have this hot chocolate to drink since it's so cold outside. Me too. All right, Super Kids, it's time to hang up our aprons and clean those spatulas. This has been In the Kitchen. The sights, the sounds, the festivities of Christmas are so spectacular. But do you know one of the most spectacular moments in history was over 2,000 years ago when a star arose in the night sky. The star proclaimed to everybody that Jesus had been born. Come with me as we read about the wise men in their journey to see Jesus, to worship him and present unto him great treasures. In Matthew chapter two, verse one, it says, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from Eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. So the wise men, they knew about prophecy and they knew that that star meant the savior of the world had been born and they wanted to come and see him. But not everyone was so excited. 
In verse 3, King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Now, King Herod was not excited about this news because he only wanted to be the ruler over Israel. He only wanted to be the king. He didn't want another king coming in and taking his spot. And in verse seven, then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him. Now we all know that King Herod had no intention on worshiping Jesus. He wanted to destroy Jesus and he was using the wise men to try to track him down but that, that plan doesn't work. In verse nine, after this, the interview with the wise men went their way and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and they worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So let's see these wonderful gifts that the wise men brought to the newborn king. They brought unto him gold. And gold is an appropriate gift for a king because Jesus is the king of kings. They brought unto him frankincense. And the frankincense, that represented the priesthood of Jesus, that he was not just a typical king. They also brought unto him myrrh, and the myrrh represented his death and his burial that would happen in the future. So super kids, these are all amazing gifts and treasures that the wise men brought to Jesus, and it should be. But did you know that the greatest treasure of all, it's not gold or frankincense or myrrh or even silver, but the greatest treasure is God's word to us. In Proverbs chapter two, verse one through four, it says, my child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Turn your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would search for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Now the wise men here, they sought Jesus. They searched for the baby and they found him. But remember to continue to be wise like these guys. Seek Jesus and search for the word of God. Search it, read it, because inside the word of God is great treasures. Are you okay? You look a little lost. Yeah, I am lost, but I got so distracted by this big star in the sky that I lost my sheep pack. It is such a big, beautiful star. It came up last night and I haven't been able to get my eyes off of it. It's so beautiful. Well, did you know that the star actually means something? Does it mean there's a lot of commotion going on in the Milky Way? Well, there is, but this star is about the commotion going on on heaven and earth. Whoa, what does the star mean and who does it belong to? It's his star. His star? Are you speaking in code? Or is that the name of a star in the galaxy? No, it's Jesus' star. I guess you gotta be wise to understand space and stars. Are you an astronaut or something? Not quite, but there were some wise men when Jesus was born who knew that there would be a big star in the sky and that was going to be their sign that the savior had come. Wait, they came to worship the star? No, they came to worship Jesus. So the story of Jesus started with a bright star in the sky? That's right. Would you like to go see the new king? That sounds great, but only if I can go with you. Sheep don't like being alone. We always travel together in herds. Of course, we can go together.
Super Kids, you have tuned in to Back to the Bible. Luke 15 in our Super Kid Manual tells us the Bible story about the prodigal son. Jesus told the people this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my inheritance now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. Then the younger son packed all of his things and moved far away and spent all of his money on anything and everything. A great famine swept over the land, and the younger son ran out of money. He was so hungry! He got a local farmer to hire him to feed the pigs. He was so hungry that even the pig food looked good to him. One day, he said to himself, At home, even the people who work for my dad have enough food to spare, and here I am, dying of hunger! I will go to my father and say, please hire me. So he went home to his father. While he was walking up to his dad's property, his dad saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son and gave him a huge hug. The son said to him, Father, I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house. Put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. Thanks for tuning in to Back to the Bible. I do not lie. I am always quick to tell the truth. I do not steal. I am a tither and a giver, not a taker. My father makes me wealthy. I do not complain. I work hard to help my family. I honor and obey my parents and people in authority over me. I walk in love. I do not gossip. I am not rude and I am never mean. I put others first and I am not selfish. I treat other people with respect. I am always grateful for everything good in my life. I am fiercely loyal. I am full of courage and I refuse fear of any kind. I am merciful and kind. I am generous and fair-minded. I do not get offended and I am quick to forgive. I always do what is right and I do it right. I do all things with excellence. I am diligent and I am not a quitter. I only allow my eyes, ears, and mouth to let in good things. Did you know you are special? Super Kid are Super Kids for a reason. We take ordinary situations and make extraordinary choices. Let's listen to some situations and find out what would a super kid do. I'm Lieutenant Aubrey, and you're going to find out what would a super kid do. Your teacher gives you a warning for talking in class, even though it was your friend and not you. What would a super kid do? That's okay, I'll kindly talk to my teacher later. What? I was not even talking. That was so rude. Cadet Ivana didn't get offended. She was kind and said that she would talk to her teacher later. You hear a man coughing during church service and someone else says he's sick. What would a super kid do? I've never paid for something before. That seems scary. I'm not an adult! I'm not gonna do it! I'll just ignore it! I know what the word says. He can be healed. I'm gonna go ask if I can pray for him. Cadet Cadence knew that super kids can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Your little brother and you both want the front seat in the car. What would a super kid do? I've sat in the front seat two times before. I'll let my brother have it. Ah! I called shotgun! It can't get more fair than that! Be faster! I am older, so I should always get the front seat.
Cadet Ivana was fair and let her brother have the seat. Your friend tells you a secret about their family that no one else is allowed to know. What would a super kid do? Secrets are so hard to keep. I'll tell my best friend. It's not my secret to tell. I'm loyal, so I'll keep it to myself. I wonder if his best friend knows. If he doesn't, I'll just tell him not to tell. Cadet Deb is fiercely loyal and didn't tell anyone. You really want to go to camp this year, but you don't have enough money. What would a super kid do? I'm going to use my faith to sow a seed in God build provide. I guess it just wasn't meant to be. That's too bad. I'll never be able to get that much money in time. Cadet Ivana sowed a seed and walked in faith. And that's what a super kid would do. Super kids, were you watching the broadcast and be like, wait a second, who is this Jesus guy? Well, I wanna give you an opportunity to meet Jesus. Whenever we meet Jesus, we actually ask him to come into our heart and to be our savior. You know, Romans in our super kid manual, chapter 10, verse nine says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if you haven't done that before, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to do that right now. Everyone close your eyes, bow your heads and say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. God, I thank you that you are my best friend. Easy as that. You are in the family now. You know, the Bible says when one person gets saved, all of heaven celebrates. So there is an awesome party in heaven right now just for you. But guess what? We wanna have a party here too. So how we're gonna do that is parents, email us at superkids at emic.org and we will send your child a certificate and maybe something else a little special. Superkids, as Christmas approaches, don't forget what's about. His star has risen and Jesus is what it's all about. Signing off. What a wonderful time we had learning about the wise men and how they came to worship Jesus and present unto him great treasures of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But one thing that we learned in this message today is that our greatest treasure, it's not gold, it's not frankincense, and it's not even myrrh. Our greatest treasure is the Word of God. And if you wanna stay wise like those wise men, you need to keep on seeking Jesus. Search for him in this word because in the word lies hidden treasures of great riches that are worth more than silver or gold. So remember, super kids, stay wise and always seek Jesus. Ordinary kids doing extraordinary things. Signing off now. Thank you for watching Super Kid Academy at Eagle Mountain International Church. Kids, get your parents' permission and visit us on Instagram, Facebook, or at emic.org. We'll see you next time at Super Kid Academy.